Hello, I'm Aga from Arby's Artist and today I show you what you can do to improve your work drastically just by adding a bit of imperfection to your images. Let me explain a bit what I mean. In the real world, perfect surfaces just don't exist. If you take a look at the wall corner, it will never be as straight as in the 3D software. You will never find the perfect clean floor, even after proper cleaning, because you will always find something there. A bit of dust, smudges, a drop of water. The same with any other surfaces. But in the software, artists a lot of times show this perfectly created world that just doesn't exist. And this is a lot of time the reason why their visualizations look fake and unrealistic. Now, you can see this perfect sphere with matte metal applied. Let's add some scratches to make it less perfect. And maybe now let's try some fingerprints. What if we mix these effects together? These effects are overdue of course, but this is only for your reference to make it easy for you to see the differences. Now let's go to the software and let's see how it works with our scene. I've prepared a scene with the armchair, which has copper legs we'll be working on. Let me show you how the material looks now. By the way, I use Corona, but in every way it works exactly the same, just use analogous maps. So you can see that now it's a clean copper. And as I said before, there are no such pure clean materials in the real world. It's especially visible on metals. So let's begin with some scratches. I show you the texture I will use. You can look for different maps like this online. Just type surface imperfection textures. You can see that the texture has scratches in different directions. Let's see how we can improve this material. You can see that now we have clean metal with a hardly noticeable reflection glossiness value. What we can do with the texture I've shown you before is to add this to the reflection glossiness slot. Let's start interactive rendering. Okay, here we go. You can see that we have scratches on the legs. I like the scale here, so I won't be adjusting this. But I don't want scratches to be so visible, as this is not a really old armchair. So we need to adjust the texture a bit. I use a color correction map. Let's see how the output is changing by increasing the value of gamma contrast. You can notice that if the texture has less contrast, the scratches are less visible. I decrease the value now. Let's say 1.5. Okay, but as I said, I want this to be subtle, so I think 2.5 will be just fine here. Great. So we can notice them, but they are hardly visible. One additional tip. You can add a reflection map to your render elements to make it easier to work on material. In this case, it's not needed as we have fully reflective metal. But in some cases, for example, when you work on wooden floorboards, it may be easier to see where the changes of the material are. Okay, actually, I think it's too strong. I change the value to 3. Nice. Hmm. I'd like to add some fingerprints to this, as there will be always somebody who will touch these clean surfaces by fingers, right? Let me show you the texture I will use. I will use the mix map, so I will mix these two textures together. But first, let's see how the one with fingers works by itself. Ok, 
oh, something is going on here. Okay, but this time the scale of the texture is not right. Let's make it twice smaller. Let's apply the UVW X4 modifier. Set all tiling values to true. Okay, look better, but the effect is way too strong. But I not be focusing on this now, as we'll be mixing these maps together, so I adjust this later. Let's add the fingerprints texture to slot named color 2 and plug the mix map to the reflection glossiness slot. Now, only scratches work, so we need to adjust the mix amount. Let's start with value 20. We can see something here, but I think it's not enough. Let's change it to 30. Okay, I think we need to make the scratches uh, more visible as well, as after mixing these maps together, the effect is not so strong as it was before. Let's set the value to 2 again. Okay, better but maybe even more. One point eight will be enough. We can control the strength of the whole effect in the material. Let's go to the maps. You can see that I have value 60 here, so the map didn't work 100%. Let's see how it will look if it works at 100%. The effect is much stronger. Of course, I don't want this. Let's see what we'll get if the value will be equal to 50. Okay, I think now it's perfect. We can see it, but not at the first glance. And this is basically the way you should think. It's always better to do this effect not strong enough than too strong. The purpose of this is to add this extra touch of photorealism, not to overwhelm your viewer and make him wonder why is there. Secondly, always do this only for the objects which are close to the camera, as it won't be visible far away. So don't waste your time on things that do nothing. We can add one extra texture as the scratches should have a bit of depth, right? So I use the normal map to use as a bump. In Corona, we need to additionally use Corona normal texture. Check option add gamma to input and see what happens. Okay, you can see that there is an effect, but it should work another direction, so let's change the value to minus one for now. Great, the effect is too strong though. Let's decrease the value. I think we should go even lower. Let's see minus 0.01. Maybe a bit more. Okay, I think something in between will work the best. Awesome, we can see it a little, but not so much. And this is a goal here. You can add these little imperfection accents to different materials. Keep in mind tips I've gave you before. I hope you enjoyed the video and you're ready to test this technique on your next project. 
Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe, and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.